I'm Kim. You're watching Kim Wilson TV. My channel is dedicated to helping victims of narcissistic abuse get free and stay free. So many aspects of involvement with a narcissist are absolutely dangerous uh, to a victim or survivor. I do believe that one of the biggest traps and one of the most detrimental aspects of our involvement with them is sex. And I want to talk about that today. Okay. <laughs> This is really embarrassing, and I've said a lot of really embarrassing things at this channel. Uh, guys, I cannot express how much I appreciate uh, the outpouring of support because I would never have been able to say some of this embarrassing shit if you guys had not been so supportive. Now, initially, as, as you know, I worked with Trevor. Trevor was kind of the class clown. He was the goofy, drunken guy at work. Trevor is you know, far, far shorter than me. He's very, very round in stature. His pants are always hanging halfway down. He's got like plumber's crack up his ass. Uh, poorly dressed. I truly, uh, the only thing I could really compare him to is like a garden gnome or a troll. Not by any means the type of man that I would have ever found myself sexually attracted to. Now, as Trevor began to target me as a potential source of supply and long-term victim, uh, I will say that I started to find myself attracted to him. Now, I had no explanation for this and, of course, was not fully under, <laughs> under the evil spell yet and was a bit perplexed by my a sudden attraction to this horrible little creature. Now, as time went on and, uh, you know, he had taken me hostage and there was a point where I really recognized that I was crazy about him, but the other <laughs> I was lusting after this horrible little man, and I mean sexually lusting after him. Now, I've never been a luster by nature, and uh, I'm an Aquarius, and I think if you know anything about Aquarians, uh, they tend to be very much attracted to a human being's mind, uh, very much attracted to uh, innovative and enlightened thought. Uh, sexuality or lusting has never been kind of a, a, a part of my life, but I will tell you, <laughs> by the time Trevor and I kind of got together and the spell was fully on me and I was under his evil hypnotic control, <laughs> I was absolutely lusting sexually after this horrible little creature. Whew, that was embarrassing. But you know, they've got that saying, you're only as sick as your secrets, right? And I don't want to be sick, so I'm just throwing this shit out there. Now, I do believe that uh, having sex with Trevor, which I believed I was making love to him uh, and feeling, I mean, overwhelmed with love for him and overwhelmed with lust for for. Captain Stump Dick, but uh, I do believe it was uh, the, the sexual act with Trevor that absolutely set in concrete uh, the next five years of abuse. It was uh, that that I believe really reinforced the spell, really reinforced um, my loyalty to him, my dedication to him, my servitude to him, my incredible desire to to uh, help him to be whole as a man, to help him get well. Now, even in the very early stages of the relationship, absolutely, I saw, sorry, it was a hair in my face. I really saw him as a troubled man, a man with problems above and beyond anything I'd ever seen before. But I also believe it was uh, the act of having sex with him that really, uh, put the concrete boots on me and really got me stuck in that relationship. Was the sex great? No, no, not at all. But there I was almost in a hypnotic trance. I mean, 
absolutely desperately in love with him. And I do believe it was that repetition of sex that really, really reinforced that. Now, in retrospect, and through research, understanding, uh, through this collective, I've really, really come to understand that they are sexual vampires, that they do use sex as a weapon of entrapment. Um, the sex with a narcissist is not anything like making love to someone. Now, I have been involved in relationships with human beings where sex meant an honest and genuine heartfelt exchange of love in a very deep, intimate, personal way. That's not what was happening with Trevor, not at all. The act of sex with Trevor was sending up all kinds of red flags. It didn't feel like making love. It felt like fucking. That's what it felt like. Now, I'm not much of a fucker. I'm not into sport fucking. I'm not into grudge fucking. I'm not into revenge fucking. In fact, I'm simply not into fucking. Um, I, for me personally, um, need to have a genuine connection with someone to be sexually promiscuous with them. And I felt from the very beginning that there was a real void, a real emptiness in that uh, sexual connection with him. Now, for someone like me that takes my sex life uh, quite seriously, and I do believe that is something very private, very intimate, uh, I found this aspect of the relationship to be extremely painful. Uh, the infidelity, of course, and all the humiliation and shame, and then, of course, being blamed for all of it was excessively painful uh, for me, uh, incapacitating in many ways. Uh, there was also that lack of real human intimacy, that lack of real human connection that would leave me feeling somewhat raped after sex. Um, uh, I found it to be just one of those aspects of the relationship with the narcissist that was terribly painful for me. And then, of course, um, him trying to demand unusual uh, or perverted sex with me, which uh, I was really, really uncomfortable with and wouldn't comply with, which would then cause problems in the relationship. There was also the fact that they use sex as a weapon, uh, withholding sex. So then I would feel a tremendous amount of uh, emotional abandonment, physical abandonment. And I will say that during the entire five years, sex with Trevor was definitely a red flag. And it was an area of tremendous uh, mental, emotional, spiritual, physical Hmm. It wasn't right. I'll tell you, there is something wrong there. Since the narcissist is void, the capacity for love or empathy or true human compassion, uh, they will always be using us as sex dolls, tools of sex, tools of masturbation. They're not making love to us. They are... They're masturbating on us, basically, is what's happening. And I will say for me personally, I felt like that most of the time. Now, if you're still with your narcissist, I would uh, suggest very, very strongly that you do not have sex with them. I believe that this is the way they continue to uh, re-victimize, re-assault us, re-injure us. And if you're away from the narcissist and you are at risk of getting hoovered back in, for the love of God, do not go back with them. Um, I would say that in my own personal experience and through much research, uh, if you have done some healing away from the narcissist and you do engage in sex with them again, it will not only reopen all the old wounds, but it will most certainly undo any healing that you've done thus far. I do believe that sex with the narcissist reinforces their control and manipulation over us. I do believe it is a means of re-injuring us or continuing to injure us. And I know for certain, uh, through my own personal experience, uh, having sex with one of them once you've gotten free uh, will absolutely send you catapulting back, remove any healing you've done, and create a much worse situation. Uh, avoiding these sexual vampires is always going to be your best bet. I really believe that avoiding uh, sexual contact with a narcissist is going to reinforce healing and it's going to prevent re-injury. I'm Kim. You're watching Kim Wilson TV. Peace be with you guys. I hope you're